Hello, my name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math Academy. And if you're watching this video, I assume you have an interest in homeschooling algebra. So I'm going to kind of take a educated guess and um, make an assumption that you're probably a parent or maybe a teacher kind of maybe doing some research on uh, various homeschool programs, uh, specifically algebra curriculums, and uh, and you found my video. So that's great. That's kind of what was the whole purpose of this video. So if you're not familiar with Tabit Class, um, I've been, uh, of course, I'm the founder of it, but really been developing over a lot the last say 15 years and done a lot in homeschooling many many years and really have a strong track record so really when I developed Tabit Class my whole uh, focus was really to develop in the, a high quality independent learning system uh, for students to really get you know an exceptional education you know right on par with being um, in the class with the great teacher so for example so let's say here is a student and here is a teacher the, the thing that the number one most critical element for this student to succeed is not a textbook or worksheets or software. All these things are important, okay? The number one thing that is the most important thing in education for a student to be successful is instruction, okay? Is the teacher teaching, okay? So that's why we have teachers, right? The teacher, you know, doesn't say hey here's a textbook go ahead and read the textbook you know <laughs> here you go home and read the textbook and then come back and I'll give you a test that's not how education works right the teacher is explaining putting color on the material and really deciphering making hopefully trying to make the complex understandable that's really what I try to do with tablet classes develop high quality math curriculum that uh, is clear and understandable. So, you know, this has been a lifelong uh, project, many, many years, uh, and I mean <clears throat> uh, a lot of years, because just to be a teacher uh, takes a lot of years to really get good at that craft. So for myself, for example, I have a degree in mathematics, a master's degree, but I also had to go through the process of teaching. You can become a first-year teacher, a second-year teacher, etc., and you keep, you know, developing your craft. So, you know, um, becoming an excellent teacher is you know multiple years of effort education experience and then to translate that into video form or an online program is even a whole nother uh, challenge so that's really been my passion for several years so I'm excited that you found me and at least you um, you know know a little bit more about tablet class and you can assess it as an option and it might work for you but um, anyways I'm gonna leave a link uh, to my homeschool algebra uh, course in a description of this video so you can really take a look at some free previews etc and kind of uh, you know judge for yourself if you think it might be right for your, for you but what I have here is a, a quick little problem on variables so variables is a topic that's definitely taught in Algebra 1 and uh, it's taught in pre-algebra. It's actually taught in, like right when you're you know very very young in elementary school but you just don't formally refer to it as variables. So here is a quick problem. And this is something that uh, most of your students or children out there should be able to do right now. So if I said evaluate, evaluate the following okay so evaluate this all right given this information right here all right most of your students out there should be able to do this right now okay so if your uh, child's there or if you want to go ahead and pause the video and just figure this out it's even kind of intuitively kind of you kind of look at it even if you didn't know anything about variables most of you should be able to kind of just figure this out um, on your own but Again, we're going to be, you know, talking a little bit more about variables in this uh, little video here. So let's go ahead and get to uh, the solution. So variables, what are variables? Well, in mathematics, variables are nothing more than symbols, okay? We often see them as letters, okay? So like the classic variables in algebra or like X, Y, Z, we like to use those, A, B, C, but we also have other type of um, symbols. Now, symbols are letters that represent numbers. Okay, so again, so variables are symbols or numbers that represent values, numbers. Okay, so we all, 
typically in algebra like to use lowercase letters, but that's not the only type of variables that we have. You can also use symbols, again, like a triangle or a square. These are a little bit less com um, common, but um, you can also have a symbol like this. Okay, so hopefully, let me go and draw this up here actually. So hopefully you guys recognize what this is. This is the symbol for pi, right? So this represents a number. 3.14 on and on and on so it's a variable it's a symbol that represents a number and in the case of pi pi is what we call an irrational number this uh, number does not repeat itself and it does not terminate in other words we would have to you know in order for us to write out the full value of pi okay we would have to go out to infinity because the digits just they don't repeat and they keep changing. So we call this an irrational number. So we're, just, we're gonna just make it easy on ourselves and say, okay, this value, we're just going to give it this symbol, okay? And this symbol here is going to represent this entire value. That's why variables are so powerful, okay? Anyways, I don't wanna turn this into a complete full lesson about variables, but one of the things that um, is really important uh, for students to be able to do is to evaluate expressions involving variables. So the way we're gonna do that is replace these variables here for the given assigned values. Now, the values for like this triangle, right now it's two, and for G it's four, F it's 10, and for the square it's three, but these symbols can represent or have any um, uh, numeric value assigned to them. And it could be uh, whole numbers or positive and negative numbers, fractions, decimals, all types of things. So what we're gonna do is take the current values of these variables and plug them into this expression and then simplify using the order of operations, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start. So we'll start with the triangle. So we can see our triangle is equal to two. Now. A, a lot of what students will tend to do is just go, okay, that's going to be 2 times the value of g, so that's 4, right? And that is technically correct, but one of the things I want to stress to you right now, even if you don't ever watch any one of my videos again, just on evaluating expressions is always, oops, let me go and erase this, always plug in values into expressions using parentheses. And this is going to save you a lot of headaches later down the line and I don't really have too much time to go into it right now, but believe me, you'll avoid a lot of errors, uh, especially when you're working with positive and negative numbers by using parentheses. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in a two for a triangle, but this time we're going to use parentheses. So it's gonna be parentheses two times G is four. Okay, so we're gonna use parentheses again. And then we're gonna divide that by F, F is 10. So that's going to be 10. Again, I'm using parentheses just to make the point here. Always use parentheses when you plug in your initial values, okay? So it's going to be 10 minus the uh, square, and the square is equal to 3. Okay, now at this point, we have all of our values plugged in. What you want to do is double check that we um, have everything plugged in correctly. So we have a triangle, triangle is 2 times G, G is four, okay, so that's good. And then we have F is 10, so that's good there, minus the square, which is three. Okay, perfect. So before you move forward, okay, two things you're gonna learn from this video is, one, use parentheses when plugging in values into expressions, okay? We're replacing variables with an assigned value. Always use parentheses, okay, number one. Number two, before you start simplifying, double check that you plugged in all the values correctly, okay? All right, so everything looks good now. So from this point forward, we're just gonna go ahead and use the order of operations to simplify. So we'll go ahead and start with the numerator. So two times four is eight. Okay, so we'll just write that here. Now notice I don't, I don't, um, I didn't use parentheses right uh, as the result of this product, two times four. I stress using parentheses when you first plug in the initial values. Again, I can show you several examples where things, uh, especially when you're working with negative numbers, you can get in trouble if you don't, you don't do the, uh, uh, use parentheses. But again, you're going to have to kind of watch some of my full lessons on that. But anyways, at, once you uh, do your initial setup, then you don't have to keep using parentheses from this point forward. All right, so two times four is 
8. Okay, we have our answer here. And now let's go ahead and take a look at 10 minus 3. And that would be 7. All right, so that's it. Okay, so our answer is 8 over 7. And we just want to make sure this fraction is fully simplified, and it is. And a little side note on fractions. No need, here, this is what we call an improper fraction. You don't have to change this fraction into a mixed number. In other words, you don't have to go and take 7 and divide it by 8 and, and convert this into a mixed number. So 7 goes into 8, 1. 1 times 7 is 7. So the difference is 1. So this is 1 and 1 seventh, right? You don't don't um, a lot of you out or um, out there are probably used to taking an improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number don't do that unless you um, are kind of told explicitly to do that okay I have seen so many students who've turned in their answer as a mixed number and the it was actually wrong okay because they messed up with the division here but in fact they had the right answer as an improper fraction so in algebra uh, and as in more advanced mathematics as long as your fraction is fully simplified you're perfectly fine so you want to kind of get in the habit of um, leaving your answers as improper fractions that are fully uh, uh, reduced and simplified all right so just a quick little uh, video on variables and a little bit obviously about tablet class math academy um, again, uh, my best advice to you out there, whether you're the parent or teacher or whatnot, is just to go and, you know, look at various options, okay? Go out there, sample, you know, different uh, programs and see what makes sense for you. But as a teacher of many, many years, I could just tell you right now, you want to focus on instruction, okay? Who is the teacher? Who's teaching your child? let's just say that much and just because it's online learning or remote learning distance learning whatever you want to call it there's still a teacher behind this curriculum so if your child's using a program and there's some video playing uh, and there's somebody presenting material you'd like to know a little bit about who that person is in tablet class all the curriculum all the instruction is done by myself extremely comprehensive so you know you want to get to know who is the teacher of a program because that is the most important part of any uh, math learning program all right so let's go ahead and wrap it up um, if you are new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I'm posting videos all the time. I've been on YouTube for like 12 years. So try to post um, lots of various different math uh, videos. Uh, so if you just want to learn math from me through my YouTube channel, you can find a ton of videos on various different topics. And I like, uh, also like to pass on my best advice on various topics as well. So hopefully uh, you'll consider subscribing. Again, a link to uh, my homeschool algebra course is in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Are you uh, new to homeschooling? Uh, um, are you a traditional homeschooler? Of course, at the time I'm making this video, uh, we're in the middle of uh, the pandemic, which has been extremely disruptful in all of our lives and a lot of you out there are kind of forced into a homeschooling scenario and you have a, a tremendous amount of anxiety about that which I completely understand um, but I'll tell you something you want to give um, homeschooling a um, well, let's just for you know I think an open mind you want to keep an open mind about it because a lot of people will look at it and they have anxiety and they're not sure how this is going to work but I can tell you right now with a, if you kind of do your research and find good programs for your child and kind of figure it out homeschooling can really really um, work out nicely for you and your child okay so um, I do want to offer that message of hope and that's why you know for tablet class I really try to build something that is super easy to use but extremely comprehensive that works okay so there's programs out there that can definitely help you but if you use the wrong program then that's where you know you can definitely run uh, run into problems but with that being said I hope this video helps you out uh, certainly appreciate your time and have a great day